Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. And today we're at a conference sponsored by Operative, and we'll be talking to some surgeons about the trend towards outpatient total joint replacement. And to start our conference off today, we're going to be talking with Dr. Nicola. Dr. Nicola, thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Well, can you start by telling us a little bit about your training and sort of how you came to be uh, where you're at now and where you practice right now? Uh, I started, uh, I, I trained in, at Rush Medical in Chicago, where we were doing a lot of joints at that time. Uh, went out in private practice, started in Burbank, California, a, a large trauma center. Uh, and then approximately 20 years ago, moved up to Bo near Boise, Idaho, and have been in private practice there. My practice has gradually narrowed down and narrowed down into really joints and mainly knee joints at this point. Uh, it, it, it's just my passion, and, and I really enjoy uh, doing it. Well, now, I think that, that we all see this trend towards less and less invasive surgery in, in a host of different uh, areas, in general surgery, in urological surgery, and clearly in, in orthopedics with arthroscopy uh, being our sort of forte for years and years and years. And now we're moving towards using different techniques to try to minimize the amount of trauma, the amount of exposure that we do to replace hips, replace uh, knees. What do you think that that's going to give us in terms of uh, uh, outcomes, better outcomes? How is this going to affect the patient's outcome? Uh, the patients, A, are getting out of the hospital way, 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 way earlier. Uh, and that's not just the younger patients, that's the older patients too. The patients traditionally have stayed for three or four days, and now we're leaving the day after surgery, even two days after surgery. Traditionally, they've been there several days or gone to rehab. Uh, the other thing you see is they're up right away, they're moving, they're, they're going, they're happy. Uh, and they, they want their other side done as fast as they can. Uh, it's just exci it's an exciting time. Now, one of the things that has, has, I think, led to some of this ability is the use of computer navigation in uh, doing total joint replacements. Can you describe a little bit about how computer navigation differs from the way we would traditionally, say 20 years ago, have done an artificial joint either in the hip or in the knee? And, and again, it, it, it's not 20 years ago because probably, at least in my era, more guys than not are still doing traditional methods. And so you'll use alignment rods and you'll stand back, you'll kind of take a look and make sure everything lines up right. Um, you'll have your assistant kind of look uh, and, and make sure that you know all of your rods and alignment rods. The other problem with that is uh, some people are using rods in the canal, which increases blood loss, both intra-op and post-op. Uh, the computer assisted, uh, where you're just placing small pins uh, and getting very precise alignment allows us A, to do usually smaller incisions, B, is much less bone exposure, and, and C, is after surgery, you don't have these, these holes in the bone that are, that are bleeding. And how does the patient perceive that? I mean, what benefits are they going to have uh, in the immediate post-operative period? I find that A, uh, for me, uh, I'm actually resecting less bone so that I can do a more precise fit to the components. The patients, with some of the other modalities we're using, pain modalities, the patients are, are just up quicker and the knees are stable and they're working well. And, and I just found as I move from, um, um, from traditional knee instruments to computerized, uh, it's made a world of difference in my results, in my outcomes, and in my patient satisfaction. Well, describe for me the, the ideal patient that would be a candidate for a total knee replacement as an outpatient. What does that patient look like? Obviously, a patient who doesn't have any major medical problems, um, a patient who's motivated, and generally, you want the patient to be uh, with a, a lower BMI, but not necessarily. Some of the patients who have a higher BMI actually do very well. And we're talking about BMI for patients that may be watching this. That's the body mass index. So that's basically if whether how, how overweight you are. Correct. Um, talk, talk a little bit about how you manage pain in the outpatient uh, environment. When you when you discharge a patient as an outpatient, a lot of patients, I'm certain, are going to be worried, well, how, how much pain am I going to have? How am I going to deal with that at home? And how long is that pain going to last? Uh, 
and, and that I think is, is the crux of the, the whole program. That is the main thing if you, if for an outpatient joint is you have to manage pain because traditionally patients, they're in the hospital, they have pain pumps and they're pushing buttons and getting morphine or, or, or Demerol or, or they're taking strong narcotics in the hospital and there's that fear of I'm gonna go home and my pain's not gonna be managed. And what I've found is the patients who go home earlier actually have a, a, a perception of less pain postoperatively. The longer they stay in the hospital, the more pain they perceive. Uh, and so I send the patients home with, with different pain medicines, with prescriptions for different pain medicines. I have them choose one, and then if they need to make a change to one stronger or, or weaker, they have to call me first and get my approval. Uh, but I find that the patient goes home. Now you're not ringing the nurse call, <clears throat> excuse me, ringing nurse call button, waiting for the nurse to bring your, your pill and then for the pill to work. If you're home and your knee starts to hurt, you take your pain pill, you're ready to go. So if I can paraphrase, it sounds like there's, there's multiple reasons why a patient's pain is better controlled. One is that the, the new minimally invasive techniques actually do less damage. So there's, there's less pain um, generating tissue damage uh, after the procedure. And the other I think that you brought out, which I think is important, patients at home tend to be more in control of their pain than they are in the hospital. And, and the anxiety that goes along with being in the hospital is reduced when they go home. So I, I think what I heard you say is that that actually reduces their perception of pain and makes them much more in control of the situation. They, they, they know when they're gonna have pain, that they, they, their caregiver or themselves take their pain pill and they're ready to go. Obviously, during surgery, we do things to de decrease our immediate post-operative pain, um, that initial 24-hour or 48-hour pain. Uh, but the, the patients want to be in control, and, and they enjoy being in control. Um, what about the recovery time uh, after surgery for these minimally invasive procedures that, that are done as an outpatient? What do you perceive is the normal time frame for patients to get back on their feet doing things uh, like drive a car, like going to the grocery store, things that they would normally associate with normal everyday activity, maybe even going back to work. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm a little um, faster letting a patient drive a car with if they've had their left knee done versus the right, since the right is their gas pedal than brake pedal. Uh, but most patients seem to feel that they're sufficiently recovered to do their daily activities somewhere at the four to six week mark. Some patients a little quicker at two weeks, some patients a little longer, but seems like somewhere in that four to six weeks, they're pretty good and they're out and they're in, in, in public doing things. They're out earlier, they're out at two weeks, but, but still with some limited activity. Um, talk a little bit about the, the outcomes that you're seeing from minimally invasive, uh, using the computer and doing these as, as an outpatient. Are you seeing improvements, let's say two years down the road, are these patients doing better two years down the road than folks that may have been treated in the traditional way? Those patients, I think, in part of it's their motivation. Those patients are the patients that come in and say, thank you, my knee feels great, I'm sending four of my friends to see you because I'm doing so well. Uh, I just think that their whole perception of the process is better, which leads to better outcomes because you have patient cooperation. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about operative and the, and the conference that you're attending. My understanding is that the goal of the conference today is to really try to educate uh, other both patients and surgeons about the the benefits of using computer assisted navigation and also starting to move towards outpatient surgery for total joints. Something that I, I think, as you mentioned, there's, there's still a lot of surgeons, probably the vast majority of surgeons, who still uh, do not use computer-assisted navigation and they do not consider a total joint replacement as an outpatient procedure. Um, how do you find this format with bringing all these surgeons together to try to, uh, I, I would say, arrive at a consensus on how uh, total joints should be done in the future and try to publicize that. Have, have you found this conference to be a useful uh, tool? I, I do, and, and I find as we get together and we bring our ideas together, we're allowed to pool things, and so sometimes it allows us to, uh, to tweak our, our format slightly. And so I'll go back to Boise, Idaho, and, and, and I'll tweak my format again as I talk to the other uh, participants here uh, about 
what they're doing and what's working and, and things. Um, so I find that as we get together and share our ideas, and, and I've done that before, share my ideas, uh, it, it just, I leave, the are the participants leave with increased understanding and increased, uh, uh, increased uh, participation in, in an outpatient joint program. Uh, and even surgeons who may be reluctant to do it as they hear the experiences of, of the surgeons who have done it uh, realize that it may be a viable alternative for them. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you to make a prediction. How long do you think it's going to be before outpatient total joint replacement, at least in the hip and in the knee, done with computer-assisted navigation is the norm. I mean, what are we looking at? Are we looking at a decade? Are we looking at a couple of years? Uh, can you make any predictions? I will, pr and again, uh, I've seen um, outpatient gallbladders come through, uh, laparoscopic gallbladders. I, I was, I, I'm old enough to have seen arthroscopy really come into common widespread use. I would predict in five years, most surgeons are gonna be wanting to do outpatient. I think it's gonna be a huge wave that the patients are gonna drive. Patients are gonna, no patient wants to stay in the hospital. They wanna go home. It's, the patients are gonna drive this and the patients are gonna to go to the surgeons who can, who can provide them that service. Well, for the patients that are watching today, can, do you have any other suggestions about how they may go about making this decision as to whether or not outpatient total joint replacement is appropriate for them? And if so, how they can locate a surgeon that may be amenable to doing outpatient total joint replacement? Um, I, I, I think that number one, the patient has to realize that they, if they go home, they have to have somebody at home with them, uh, and we can't send them home without a caregiver there or a friend. Or, uh, two is they have to be motivated enough to be able to manage their own some of their own post-operative um, uh, care in terms of taking their own pain medicine and realizing when they need the pain medicine. But but in my experience. Almost all patients can do that. And I'm surprised with, with the patients and their resilience. Uh, and three is, I'm, I'm not sure how to locate a surgeon. Uh, there, there's just a few of us at this point that are doing outpatient surgery. I think you have to call the surgeon, uh, the surgeon's office and say, are you able to perform outpatient surgery? How many have you done? Uh, and then I know in my area, I'm, I'm the only surgeon that has done outpatient surgery. I, I'm not sure about the, the Washington area here, uh, but, but there are surgeons out there and there are surgeons all through the Northwest and I assume through the country. Well, this has been an excellent discussion. And as we close this discussion, is there anything else that you think that either patients or surgeons that are considering this should know? I, I think that that they should know that this this is the way to go, and and the patients have done very well. Everybody thinks, oh, I, I may go home and I may have to come back to the hospital. I've had no patients come back to the hospital um, because they couldn't manage at home. The patients that go home seem to do better. I I think that a patient who needs a, or is considering a knee replacement or a hip replacement for that matter uh, should strongly consider it. Uh, it's the way I would do it. Well, I want to thank you for uh, joining us today. It's been an excellent discussion and uh, I hope you continue to push the envelope because uh, when I'm ready for my total joint, I, I definitely want to have a surgeon that is uh, uh, able to do this as an outpatient because I would much rather recuperate at home than in the hospital. So thank you very much for, uh, for carrying this torch for us. I agree and thank you for having me.